Edgerton, Abraham, James, Sershi, Chakuma, and Logan. I've come all the way from the United Kingdom just to be with you this morning. Actually, that's not quite true. <laughs> but it is an enormous privilege and delight and joy to be with you all this morning, sharing in this Holy Eucharist, but also to be here on this moment of baptism, where six children become inheritors of the kingdom of God with us, members of the church. This is a, a service about belonging. It's an important moment, of course, for families and friends and godparents, and of course for the sex who are to be baptized, but it's also an important moment for the wider community. We are here to welcome and to budge up. We all need to make room for these six new members. They enrich our lives as we welcome them and we will guide them and pray for them. I have 11 godchildren. I wish I were better at caring for them. But one thing I do do, I pray for them every day. I started praying for them because I went to visit a godchild of mine and her sister, and as they were being put to bed as young girls, they said their prayers. And just as a matter of course, I heard them say my name. Every day, they prayed for me, their godfather. And ever since that day, I was a priest already and should have known better, I've prayed for them. That's one thing godparents can do. There are lots of other ways in which you can guide and uphold and encourage your godchildren, but pray for them. And that is a responsibility for the wider community, to pray for those who are to be baptized today while we budge up to make room for them. Of course, these children already belong. They're nurtured in a family and will continue in that way. They belong. But today we mark the belonging to a wider family, to the Christian family. They belong with us, among us, our responsibility, our care, and our joy. But perhaps most important of all, they belong to God. They already belong to God. From the moment of their conception, they belong to God. This rite of baptism placards, proclaims what is always true, that we belong to God. One phrase stands out from the epistle today, which St. Paul wrote to the church in Philippi. He said, Christ Jesus has made me his own. If you read that epistle again, you'll see that Paul says, I'm going to strive, I'm going to run along, I'm going to go forward to make the goal, to reach the goal. But the most important thing is that the goal has already been reached. He, in a sense, has to do nothing. Christ Jesus has made him his own. And by implication, he has made us his own. Yes, let us go forward from this place and live the Christian life. We have plenty of striving to do. We have goals to achieve. We have a Christian life to live out and proclaim and help others with. But the most important thing is that whether we do it or not, Christ Jesus has made us his own. And that is what this sacrament of holy baptism proclaims. In the course of this liturgy, certain signs, certain emblems, certain symbols will come to the fore. Water, of course. We expect water. It reminds us of Jesus' own baptism in the River Jordan. It has a sense of cleansing. We're cleansed as babies are cleansed in the bath day by day, but we are cleansed from other things, the things that cling to us. We're washed clean. And water is refreshing. It reminds us that we're given something spiritual to drink. And then the other sign is oil. 
Oil was placed on my hands when I was ordained a priest, when a bishop is made. I don't know whether at the inauguration of the President of the United States, where, where he, whether he is chrismated, that has oil poured on him. Probably not. But in 1953, when Queen Elizabeth, you probably heard of her, she's the queen of where I come from. When she was crowned in 1953, she had the oil of chrism poured upon her. The word chrism is the where our word Christ comes from. It's the same word. Christ is the anointed one. That's, Christ was not Joseph's name, his father's name, Joseph Christ. He wasn't Mr. Christ. Jesus is the anointed one, the chrismated one. And in this service, we're going to pour oil, which was consecrated by the bishop last Holy Week. Oil of chrism will be poured on the children's, or a sign made on the children's forehead to remind them that they bear the sign of Christ. And it reminds us that they, with us, are a royal priesthood. It was Peter in his first epistle who said, you are a royal priesthood, a chosen nation, a people elect and precious. Probably Peter, when he was writing that letter or preaching that sermon, was preaching to slaves in Rome in the first century. Probably many of them died, as Peter himself did in 64 AD. Nevertheless, you are a royal priesthood. You have been signed with the chrism of God. Jesus Christ has made us his own. And then, at the end of this liturgy, from that paschal candle which was lit here on Easter Day, a sign of the rising Christ, the sign of the risen Christ, here in our midst, that large candle, don't ignore it. From that candle, six lights will be lit and given to the families of these children so that on their birthday or the anniversary of this day, they may light that candle and remember that they are to shine as lights in the world. We take the light from the paschal candle, from the sign of the risen Christ, we are part of him. And it's not just about imitating Christ, following his example. There are plenty of things in the New Testament that will help us in our Christian journey, that will help St. Paul as he strives forward to achieve his goals. Before Paul got to this point where he said, Christ Jesus has made me his own, he sang a little song about Jesus. If you came to church last week, you would have heard it read as the epistle. It goes like this. Have this mind among you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not think equality with God a thing to be snatched at or hoarded or kept to himself, but emptied himself. What does it mean to empty yourself? I can't see it now because it's out of my sight line, but, and none of you can see it all at the same time. But in the tower, there is a text. You can only see part of it wherever you're sitting. You'll have to go later on and look around at the different parts of it. But I'll tell you. It says, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him upon the throne and to the Lamb forever. The Lamb forever is Jesus. If he emptied himself, he was emptying himself of blessing and honor and glory and power. Precisely. He emptied himself. And being found in human form, he took the form of a servant and made himself obedient, obedient unto death, even death on the cross. We have here someone who was in the form of God did not think his equality with God something to be snatched at, but, and here is the trajectory, moving down, he became human, took the form of a servant, was obedient, died, even died upon the cross. You can't get further than that. 
he is at the point where we are. And then St. Paul says in his wonderful hymn, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just think of that shape, that downward trajectory, and that upward spring. When these children are baptized, they're not just having water sprinkled onto them. They're going down into a deep river, the river of Jesus' death and rising. They are that close to Jesus. Jesus Christ has made them his own, and they have entered into the mystery of his life and death and rising. It isn't just Jesus who goes down into the trajectory of our humanity to meet us where we are. It is the risen Jesus who comes up and is given the name above every name, and as he comes up, we come with him. These children come up from the waters of baptism, renewed, restored, children of God with a place in the heavenly kingdom. What will happen to these children today as they are made children of God, made one with Christ Jesus, reminds us that this is true of us all. God loves us, will never let go of us. He holds us in his love from before our birth to beyond our death, making us, transforming us into his likeness. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen.